I wore these Ariat boots for 100 miles so I could do a somewhat informed review of them before we cut them in half. You may be wondering why you're seeing a video on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Well, one of the biggest holes in my videos is the fact that I don't get to wear boots very often or for very long. So I decided to start cutting some of the videos in half where the first video is gonna be the 100 mile wear in review and then the next day or the next video will be the cut in half review. So that you've got the two different perspectives on the boot, like the wear impression and the what's inside and it's not a half an hour video. It's two shorter videos that are a little bit easier to consume. So the brand of these boots are Ariat. This is their brown bison and their black bison. I wore the brown bison for the 100 miles and I'm cutting the black bison ones in half in the next video tomorrow. The model of the boot is the Highlands boot. They retail for $298 and the upper is made from an American bison leather and they're made in the United States as well. And as you can see, they've got a leather sole with a little rubber top lift on the heel. And the construction of these is a Goodyear welt, a 360 Goodyear welt. You can see the stitching goes all the way around. And I would consider these a casual boot. They're not a work boot, they're not a dress boot, they're kind of a casual dress boot. Now let's talk about how these look after 100 miles and compare them to the brand new pair that we're cutting apart tomorrow. Also, we got the common projects in today. And this video should be out, I think next, next Wednesday. So we got Nick's on Saturday and then I think Common Projects on next Wednesday. Starting with the sole, you can see kind of the difference between the brand new sole and the used or the 100 mile sole. Quite a bit of wear, but not premature wear or like fast wear. It actually is lasting a lot longer than I expected. And then the uppers, you can see the pair that I wore for 100 miles is definitely a lot more broken in. And it's a little tricky because bison leather is so pebbled and so milled that it's hard to really tell what's wearing and what's just the way the natural bison leather looks. So overall, after 100 miles, I think they look pretty good. Obviously, they don't look brand new like these black ones. So next question is, how do these clean up after 100 miles? So I took one boot, left it as is for the comparison between the two, and the other boot, I spent maybe 10 minutes, put some Chamberlain's leather milk on it, and brushed off all of the old dirt and stuff that was built in or stuck in the welt and then took a little tokenol and burnished up the sides a little bit and this is how it turned out. It's a sign of a good boot if you can spend a short amount of time, shine it up and get it looking like a new boot again. And now let's talk about how they wore and my impressions of them after 100 miles. So to kind of frame this review and give you some context of how I wore these, they were worn basically exclusively in my shop 95% of the time standing and walking around on a smooth concrete. I didn't really walk too much outside in them. To definitely didn't go hiking in them. So most of, the most of the wear on these are from the shop. So first let's talk about comfort after 100 miles. These are still really comfortable. I was actually really impressed at how long they stayed comfortable. Some of the cheaper boots like the Doc Martens after about 100 miles, you really start to feel that lack of shank and the poor leather quality and build and the construction quality but these have just gotten more and more comfortable the toe box has actually widened out a little bit compared to the brand new ones you know as you wear these in that leather stretches out and fits to your foot better so i don't really feel that tightness in my toes anymore which is nice i was concerned that this layer of foam in the insole would maybe wear out and compress after a few miles but it's actually still pretty squishy and it's definitely not overly compressed it makes me wonder if it's a pour on a higher quality foam so I guess we'll see when we cut it in half. And then as I wore these in, the sole became less slippery over time as I started to kind of get some wear on these and they weren't just perfectly smooth. And as this heel block leveled out, um, they're still definitely slippery and it's gonna be that way with any leather sole shoes, you know, with like RM Williams or anything, it's gonna be slightly more slippery. And now to the durability of these. So starting with the sole again, I'm surprised at how long these have lasted. There's not a whole lot of wear on here for hundred miles. And it's on smooth concrete, so you're not gonna see a lot of wear, but I was really surprised at how long this lasted. I, I don't think it's a oak tan leather or anything special, but it's, it is pretty durable, which is nice. Now to the stitching on the upper. So this is a pretty thin and narrow stitching, but it's held up really well. You know, 100 miles isn't enough to really test the stitching on these, but I haven't seen any breaks from it yet and no premature wearing or rubbing anywhere. And then to the leather, 
like I talked about previously, like it looks really good still after 100 miles, especially after putting a little conditioner on it. Um, I haven't had any issues with the quality of the leather. It is a little bit thinner of a leather, so it's not gonna last nearly as long, but it's still fairly durable and it's really breathable. That's kind of the benefit of having a thinner leather compared to a thicker leather. A thinner leather is more breathable and more lightweight, but it's not gonna last as long. A thicker leather, it's going to, it's, it's not gonna breathe as well, it's gonna be hotter, but it's gonna last significantly longer, so it's, it's kind of a trade-off either way. And these being more of a casual dress boot or just a casual boot, I think that's a good thing. You know, it's, I don't think it's a horrible thing to have a thinner leather as long as it's a higher quality leather. And now to the Goodyear stitch on the bottom here. So um, my friends at Trenton and Heath, or my friends Trenton and Heath, they did a review on these boots a few months ago. And one of the complaints they had was that this Goodyear stitch, or the welt stitch, was not recessed into the leather so that your first few miles you're just walking on a lot of the thread. And when I got the boots, it looks like they're channeled in there now. So it's cool to see that Area is taking the advice from these reviews and implementing it into the shoes and making them better because these are definitely recessed into there. So overall, what do I think of these boots? I've been really impressed with them after 100 miles. They're really comfortable still. They've worn really well. They look really good once you clean them up. Um, these definitely aren't a work boot. Um, they're also not a, a dress boot. I think they do a really good job of blending the two. You know, it's, it's kind of a combination between a Red Wing style boot and a dressier Chelsea boot. You know, it's, it's, it's done really well. There are a few things I would like to see them improve. Most notably was that heel block and top lift be, not being the same height. That was kind of annoying at first. It's something that's pretty easily fixed. And I think I would like this leather to be a little bit thicker for getting a little bit nitpicky, but I guess we'll see when we cut it in half how thick it really is. There's a few questions I still want answered that we'll only be able to answer by getting them cut in half. Does it have a steel shank? Is this a full leather heel block? Is this toe cap a true toe cap where you've got two full thickness layers of leather underneath it there? And I think there's cork in here. So I'm interested to see where they fit that in and how much cork is in there. So that brings us to the next video. I'm gonna cut these in half and see what's inside. If you like this video and you wanna see more of these uh, videos cut in half so I can go more in depth in the, the wear and then more in depth in the cut in half, let me know, support this video by liking and commenting and subscribe to the channel. And what else do you guys want me to talk about in these 100 mile wear reviews? Um, what did I miss here? What else do you guys want to know about my impressions of them? And uh, keep going from here. So thanks for everything. See ya.